Hi everyone and welcome back to our quiz game series. In the last episode we were able to give points to the players but at the moment there's no way for us to see the score of each player in the game. So let's go ahead and start working on the UI to put that score on the screen. So to display our characters and well players scores on the screen we first of all need to have some sort of UI element that we can drag on and create. Now it's going to comprise of two different widgets. We're going to have the container part and then we're also going to have the individual uh, player scores. So let's create our user interface widget blueprint. And of course we the player card. <clears throat> and we'll make another widget blueprint for player card box. Okay, so the box is just a container. Okay, so it's just going to be a vertical box, like so. And the vertical box is going to be variable, and we'll rename it box players. And we'll come back to this in a second. The next bit is we need to go into the player card and design how we want this to look. So, very simply, we're going to put in some text. Or the player name but then on the right of that we're going to have their score and we're going to display it in some sort of fancy way we'll try our best anyway so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wrap my text block here first of all with a horizontal box so there we go and then i want to have basically the same sort of style that i've got for the rest of the game so what we do is i'm going to go to my answers over here take the border I'm going to copy the brush. So copy that. Go to the here. And I want to add another border to this whole little box. And on that border, I'm going to paste my brush like that. And I want this border here to fill the available space up. And it doesn't look like it's gone through with everything. Oh, did I not change the brush color? Hold on. Let's go back here. Yep. Yeah. Brush color is a separate thing. Copy that. Paste that there. There we go. So let's see how this looks when it's not fill up the whole entire screen. So I'm going to go to custom on screen here. And we'll give it a custom width of, say, 500. And we can see what we're going to look dealing with here. So I'm going to line these up. So this text here I'm going to make more centered. So on the details panel, bring down to the center on the alignment. And this will be the player's name. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to set this to fill with space as well. So these will now take up the same amount of space. But I want to give the name a little bit more spacing available to it. So I'm going to give that uh, box here 0.8 maybe. You can adjust it later on. But that will go there. And inside that border we want some text again. So I'm going to go ahead and put in more text. And that text there will again will center a line in the middle and make it center justified. And this will be the score. So I'm gonna make that variable, name it text score. This text here can be variable and named text name. And just so we don't get any weird flipping things. I'm going to tell my text name here to clip, uh, clip here, I'm going to change that to clip to bounds. Okay, so that when the text goes off the edges, it won't overlap the score. Okay. Next up, I'm going to give this whole thing a bit of padding. So I'm going to click on the root of the hierarchy, go to padding, in five, maybe ten, something like that. And save. So now we've got to get the information from the players. So the name, simple enough. We're going to go to the graph, and this needs to be tied to a player state. Now, player states, remember, are replicated to everyone, so everyone can see the player states available to them. So that's not a problem. We're going to do player state, and we'll just call that one uh, player. 
update. Actually, I'll call it my other one, PS quiz. There you go. And what we're going to do in here, we're going to make this editable and exposed on spawn. So when we add it in, we can set which player state belongs to this one. And then on the construct event, we can take the player state, get the name of the player. So get a player name. There it is. And we'll set that to a text name. So set text. Okay. Next is this thing is update whenever the score gets updated as well. And the score is set by the game state. So we're going to get game state. And then cast to our GS quiz. And I'm going to promote that to a variable because it could be quite handy to have. You never know. But what we need to do with the GS quiz here is we need a way of knowing when the scores have been updated. And the easiest way of doing that is with event dispatches. So let's go back to the game state for the quiz. And over here, we've got the award points happening on the multicast. And what I'm going to do on here is I'm going to have an event dispatcher saying on points awarded. And we need to know how many points we're getting. Uh, we've got new points. And total points. So we're going to drag that out once it's done. We can call that. If these don't say the names, just compile it and refresh the node. So it heads up with that one. Uh, so new points is going to be the value coming in from the round there. And total points is going to come from the plus there. Okay. Hit compile. Now go back to our player card. And on a player card, on a game state quiz, we can bind event on points awarded. And we'll create an event for this. And we'll create a matching event on points awarded. But now I want to set the points score text value, set text to my total points. And let's set the default of that up with zero. Okay, so that's the individual player card. And obviously you can do whatever you want with it. If you've got avatars or you want to change colors, whatever you want. Um, we're not going to worry about that in this series. But if you are interested in knowing more about UI and want to do more UI things, do let us know in the comments below and we can work on some videos on how to do UI stuff like that. Anyway, so let's go back to the player card box. This is our vertical box and we wanted to generate the player list here. So on the graph for this, on the construct, we're going to get the game state. From that, we're going to get the player array. It's a list of all our players. And then do a for each loop. And on the for each loop, I need to cast this first of all to our PS quiz. And from PS quiz here, I want to... Um, create the widget so let's do create widget and we're going to select our player card and plug in our ps quiz that's creating a widget not yet added yet so let's add it to that box so we've got the box here in variables if you don't see this here it just means that you haven't ticked the box is variable so make sure you've got that ticked and then i can drag it out and use it and in this case i'm going to add a child to it a child vertical box and the child we'll be adding is our content we just made here plug that in there okay and that's that done so now it's a matter of where you want it to go so we could do it on the question screen however i may want it on the screen at all times irregardless of when the question is showing or not so we'll be using our game hud so let's go to our game hud and in here we're going to have our player card box and I'm going to drag it in. I'm going to keep it to the top left. So I'm going to keep the anchor where it is. I'm going to resize it. 
And I think I'm going to go for about 450 and 300. And then just position it. So 50, 50. That'll do. So let's go ahead and push play. Okay. So it's not showing the HUD correctly. So let's take a look at why that's not working there. I've got no error messages. So let's take a look where I've gone wrong. So I'm going to make sure the game has been added first of all, which I think it is in the HUD class. So let's go back to the HUD class. Uh, yep. So on begin play, it's been added to the screen. Totally fine. So that must mean the problem must be with the player card box. So let's go back to that. And got construct for each loop, game state, and so on. What I may do is rather than putting on the construct, it give it a bit of time for everyone to come in. So rather than construct here, I'm going to do a little delay as a tester for this. And change that to uh, one second. So after one second, hopefully everyone should be in. And it should be okay to start doing that box. Still not showing. Okay. So now we're going to do some breakpoints. Let's figure out where this is going wrong. So an event construct, we're going to do for each loop, add breakpoint. Oh, not working. That might be that the game mode has not been set up correctly. Hold on. Let's go game mode. Oh, the HUD class is there. Okay. So what's happening here? HUD class has gone there. Okay. So after a bit of digging around, I found what I've done wrong. And this is something you're going to have to correct as well if you've been following along. So what you need to do is go to your game state. And the game state is, we made it a, a child of the game state class. You actually want this to be a child of the game state base. So go to the event graph, or not event graph, the class settings, and change that to game state base. Be pair on that. That will co now cause the begin plays to function on our HUD class and other classes too. So if I hit play now, there you go, you can sit in the corner. Okay. So few things notice how the client has both but the server only has one and that's because at the time of creation the widget only recognized when one player was in the game the server also we need to fix out the font size things like that um i the black square by the way i did while debugging so i'm gonna take it off now as well so Let's take a look at how we do that. So let's go back to our player card uh, box. And I'll take my game hard as well. I'm going to get rid of that border. I don't really want it. There we go. So I need the player card box to update whenever a new player joins the game. Okay. So on the graph of this, this is doing a for each loop on the player array and building it up. So what I need to do before that happens, give it a delay as well, I need to clear the box. So let's take the box out and do clear children and put that in there. Now the construct will fire this off, but we also want something else to fire this off and that'll be whenever it updates. So let's plug that in. Um, but we'll put a sequence in there and put it into then one. And the other event we're going to have in here is a custom event to update list. Now also going to clear children. All we've got to do in here is bind whenever a player joins the match to the update list. So let's go to our game mode game state so the game state here is going to keep track of that but everyone knows the game state but not everyone knows the game mode so when the game mode detects a new person joins in it's got to tell the game state which will then tell everyone a new players joined so let's go ahead to the game state here and we're going to do an event dispatcher for on 
player joined. And I'm going to create a function in here. Actually, not function. We'll create an event. Sorry, my bad. Event. And that'll be a multicast again. And we'll call it player joined. And this is all we're going to do is replicate to multicast and call our event dispatcher for player joined. In the game mode, you have a post login function. Okay. When this happens, this is when a new player joins the game. I want to get my game state and call that function. So we we'll do get game state cast to GS quiz. And from there, I'm going to do player joined, MC player joined. So as players join the match, it will trigger that, which will then trigger the MC player joined, which will then in turn trigger the player card box to clear the children and get the new player array. So all that's left to do now is to bind the event dispatch we made in the game state onto that HUD. So we'll go to the player card box and on the then zero, I'm going to get game state. And then from there, cast to our particular game state, GS quiz. And from that, we're going to bind an event on player joined. And that event will be the update list here. Okay, so let's check that out now. Should hopefully get to see two in each one. Yep. All that's left is to just fix a bit of the graphics of this. Um, so it looks a little bit ni nicer. I'm gonna go to the player card here. Change the text block and text font here. Change the size down to 20. And the block here, I'm gonna change the corner radii here down to 15, 15, 15, 15. And the width here, I'm going to change to like five as well. Okay, so let's see how that looks in game now. That's looking a lot better. Okay, and there's our two player scores. We go to Egyptians, Egyptians. And hopefully we see the points get added to a list. Yeah. So we've now got our scores showing on the screen. The next part is to get that flow working now, where it's going to give us one question, answer it, show the next question, answer it, and so on. We've got that flow in there. So we're going to work on the flow in the next episode, which you can find right now on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley, where you can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all our patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.